This weekend, we were blessed with the DECA box. Week 17 of the NFL season has officially wrapped up, and this week was just as good as any other. The scriptwriters have been going insane this year. So let's recap every game and grade every single team as we try to cherish what is left of this NFL season. Welcome to Marv on Air, and I am so thankful that you somehow managed to stumble onto this video. If you enjoy the content, liking and subscribing helps me out more than you know. Now let's check out this report card. Kicking it off on Thursday Night Football, the Jets faced off against Joe Flacco. And boy, was Joe Flacco looking like prime Joe Flacco. He goes for 309 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception as the Browns steamroll the Jets 37-20. And with this win, the Browns clinch their first playoff spot since 2020, only their third since 2000, and are actually guaranteed the five seed. Very exciting for the Dog Pound. I can only imagine what it was like on Thursday night for them. I mean, we had Browns fans staying till the end of the game, which was pretty amazing. And this is not a playoff video, so if you want to see one of those come back, but let's just keep in mind, the Browns are the only team to beat both one seeds. Based on what I saw, I think it's fair to say that the Browns absolutely balled, and I'm excited to see what they can do in the postseason, and the Jets, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Not only in this week, but really in their year as a whole. One thing we have to remember when looking at this table as well is that this bottom category of when can it be next year really can be applied to any team that's out of the playoffs. I totally get that, but I am reserving it for a special few. So obviously, yes, Jets fans, when can it be next year? When can Aaron Rodgers be our quarterback? But this is just grading week 17, and I did not think that the Jets were bad enough for it to be that level of bad, like really bad. Trust, you're going to want to see who's in that category because some teams just did not show up this week. Next up, we've got the controversial call of the week. Seems like it's every single week that one of these happens. Lions at Cowboys. Lions lose 19 to 20. Obviously, you've seen it by now. The last few minutes of that game were insane. Lions end up scoring a go-ahead touchdown and decide to go for two to try to take it all. Not really the most surprising thing in the book. Before the two-point conversion, number 68 walks up to the ref and apparently tells him how much he likes that wing place down the road because he wasn't telling him, allegedly, that he was reporting as eligible. The referees thought that he was reporting number 70 as eligible. Bit of an odd take there. Regardless, Lions get lined up to run this play to win the game. They have a dialed up an awesome trick play in which 68 runs a bit of a delayed pop pass. Goff looks his way fires a dart 68 corrals it lions win baby or so we thought referees say 70 reported as eligible 68 therefore cannot catch a ball as an ineligible receiver it's illegal touching plays wiped off the board lions then decide to go for two again from their seven yard line don't get it but it doesn't matter micah parsons was off sides ball moves half the distance to the goal they go for it a third time how many two-point conversion plays do the lions have and to be fair their third attempt at winning the game could have been successful very well could have but Goff ends up putting the ball a little bit low uncatchable game over now me personally I'm wondering why we went for it from the seven yard line maybe just kick the PAT and send it to overtime but that's 2023 NFL for you and regardless Lions end up losing and what I saw in this game is that CD is emerging as a top wide receiver when it matters most 13 receptions 227 yards a touchdown with a player like that honestly even the Cowboys could potentially win it all but let's not get too hasty. Looking at the Lions, Lions struggled on third down. Goff had two interceptions. Yes, that final play did impact the game, but so did every other play before it. So as much as I want to point to the refs, the Lions didn't exactly do everything they could. Yes, it's a great Cowboys team, but if we're going to hold the Lions to the Super Bowl standard, they need to be able to figure things out. So I'm not really mad at the Lions. I am a little disappointed, largely at the refs, however. The margin for error in the NFL is so small, and the Lions being able to call play in which they can get the two-point conversion and win the game, you gotta give them credit for that. Cowboys, I think they just finished the job. I honestly think they got a little lucky. They played well the whole game, obviously, but like I just said, if the ref can tell the difference between a 68 and a 70, which are super similar numbers, their L column goes up by one. Next up, we've got my Patriots going over to Buffalo, taking on the Bills. And as a Patriots fan who wants a really high pick overall in this year's draft, the opening kickoff was quite frightening. Awesome. But also, regardless, the Patriots end up losing 21-27. The Bills got a lot of help from the Patriots throwing three interceptions. I, of all people, am starting to potentially lean towards Patriots picking a quarterback in the draft. So at this point, the Patriots had a lot of issues. I'm just a little disappointed. Honestly, we definitely could have got that game. I'm glad we did not but we definitely could have. We didn't pull it out and the Bills just finished the job. But there are certainly things in the Bills camp that are alarming to me. Diggs' involvement has been alarmingly low, charting just 26 yards in the matchup this weekend 
season and only exceeding 50 yards one out of their last five games. To me, the Bills really need to start utilizing their star players in a way that allows them to win games more handedly. I think they have the talent. I don't know how we can get away with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs combining for only 26 yards. That just might not get it done in the postseason. Next up, we have Falcons at the Bears. Bears ended up pulling away 37-17, and you know how I feel about the NFC South, so I'm not going to dog on the Falcons too much. I do it already every single video, but the Bears actually... That's a pretty surprising score. Justin Fields went 20 of 32 for 268 yards and a touchdown, and Soldier Field heard the chance of, we want Fields, we want Fields. There is certainly hope in Chicago. The same cannot be said in Atlanta, even if by some miracle they end up in the playoffs, which is extremely unlikely at this point. Heineke threw three picks. Bijan only ran for 75 yards. Falcon team looks dysfunctional at best. I wonder if this is even an NFL team sometimes. Honestly, I'm not really sure if they know to use their best players, but the Bears played better than expected. And yes, it's the Falcons, but geez. Next up, the Raiders traveled to Indianapolis to face Gardner Minshew and the Colts. And the Colts end up coming away 23 to 20, which only tightens up the AFC South race. Everyone but the Titans is now nine and seven. With only one week left to go, only time will tell who gets into the playoffs, but the Colts look good this week. Taylor went for 96 yards and a touchdown on the opening drive, and Minshew honestly looks solid. 224 yards and a touchdown, and he was dropping some balls in some buckets. Devontae Adams popped off for the Raiders, so I'm glad they were able to use their top wide receiver, and we have to remember they have an interim head coach right now, so I'm just gonna put him at the top of this loser category. Not really mad, kind of disappointed, but the Colts, on the other hand, finished the job. They got out there, did what they had to do, kept their playoff hopes alive, and are looking forward to next week. Next up, we have a rather surprising outcome between the Rams and the Giants. Rams ended up winning 26-25. Sheesh, that is close. Carried largely by Kyron Williams as three touchdowns and 87 yards. However, Stafford threw for 317, a touchdown and two picks. Puka's only like 25 yards from the rookie receiving record, and I think we should be looking for the Rams in the future, but as for week 17, they just finished the job. They did not do any better than I expected them to, actually slightly worse, but they got the win. It was a gutsy win. It was a hard win, but not every win in the NFL is going to be easy. As for the Giants, based on all the hype I've been giving the Rams, they played better than expected. Every time Red Zone panned to them and it was that close, I was like, oh my gosh, are the Rams going to lose? So I'll give them credit where it's due. Next up, we have the matchup between two birds. The Cardinals traveled to Philadelphia and took down the mighty, mighty Eagles 35-31. However, I am certainly questioning how mighty, mighty these Eagles are. Huge Jonathan Gannon revenge game. Kyler Murray got up for his head coach throwing for 232, three touchdowns and an interception. And this game was a bit odd because yes, the Eagles held the lead for most of this game, but the Cardinals kind of just hung around. Scoring a go-ahead touchdown with less than a minute left, the Eagles could not pull off that last second drive. Had to get in the end zone, which is tough, but still couldn't do it. And this game has me largely concerned about the Eagles' defense. Honestly, Hurts played okay, if not better than okay. But the Eagles gave up 35 to the Cardinals. And looking back at their last few games, 25 to the Giants, 33 to the Cowboys, 42 to the Niners, 37 to the Bills. I mean, other than the Giants, these are all very good teams but at some point you have to stop the other team from scoring so the cardinals in my opinion absolutely bald every time i say that i i just envision a bald guy and the eagles you're an nfl team right you gotta stop the other teams that's what you guys do that's what the defense is for so i'm not really sure what's happening there red flags panic buttons everything's going off i'm sure they'll get something figured out but man that panic button has been smashed on the Eagles here at the Marvon Air Studio. Speaking of the Marvon Air Studio, we here absolutely all loved your burrito comments on the last video. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of that one. It means the world to me. But back to the action, we've got Saints at Buccaneers next. And I'm a little bit disappointed in the Bucks in this one. Saints win it 23-13, and it felt like it was all Saints all day. Now, we have to remember this is an NFC South matchup. The Bucks and Saints always go at it. And so for that reason, I'm putting the Saints in the finish the job, and I'm putting the Bucks in the not mad, just disappointed. Not the end of the world for the Bucks if they win next week against the Panthers. They clinch the South. You would think a very winnable game, but this season, who the hell knows? So, unlike the Eagles, my Bucks panic button is not going off, but they got to get something figured out next week, and then after that, you're on your own. Next up, we have the 49ers and the Commanders, and the 49ers ended up winning 27 to 10. Brock Purdy looked really really good i think he has tremendous upside as a quarterback obviously we know this we've seen this but after his poor performance against the ravens a lot of people were ready to jump on him and coming from iowa state that's not exactly 
crazy news flash type things going on from Brock Purdy. Look back to the Big 12 championship game against Oklahoma, but the Niners came back this week and they flexed their muscles a little bit. Not in the way that they absolutely dominated the commanders, but I think they showed a lot of people that they're capable of bouncing back. And the commanders, I mean, what are you gonna do? I don't really have a neutral category, so I'm inclined to just say I'm disappointed in these guys, but I wanna hear it, commanders fans. Are we just looking forward to next year? That whole organization just feels like it's on fire. I don't know what the next move is. And finally, the game we've all been waiting for, Panthers at Jacksonville Jaguars. And this right here is just why I love the NFC South so much. Panthers give a riveting performance of 124 total yards and put up a ginormous goose egg on the Jags. They fall 26 to zero to the Panthers. And uh, I can't imagine anyone's thinking anything else besides Jesus, when can it be next year? Bryce Young will be looking to make that sophomore jump. David Tepper will have probably taken a class on how to avoid throwing drinks on his fans. And the Panthers will have a nice clean slate starting week one. Uh, the Jags, I feel like they just finished the job. They didn't exactly have a whole lot that they had to do. It's the Panthers. Next up, we actually had a highly coveted matchup in the AFC, Dolphins taking on the Ravens. And this one was never really that close. Ravens win at 56-19 and Lamar wraps up his MVP campaign in dominating fashion. 321 yards, five touchdowns, no picks. Looked absolutely dominant. Dolphins aren't exactly known for their defense, but he made it look easy. On the Dolphins side of things, Bradley Chubb was injured late in the game, so that's not great as they are going to be in the playoffs. And I personally think the Dolphins have some soul searching to do. Their only win against an opponent over 500 this year has been the Cowboys. I mean, come on, like... Guys, you do know you're not going to play the Commanders in the Super Bowl, right? So for now, because of all the injuries in Miami and due to the fact that the Ravens are my perennial favorite, I'm just going to say I'm a little disappointed in the Dolphins. They have a lot of room for improvement, but I would be a lot more terrified if this were to happen against a team like the Titans. Ravens, you guys flexed your muscles. We get it. You guys are ripped. Okay, Lamar, I can't wait to see you hoisting that MVP trophy. Moving on. Titans Texans Texans win it 26 to 3 this one honestly never felt like it was a game the Titans have fallen apart CJ Stroud came back for the Texans and absolutely breathed some life into that program so I'm not gonna say they played better than expected they just went out and played some football Titans guys I thought you were an NFL team what are we doing here I don't think the Texans are that much better I'm gonna be honest next up we have Steelers Seahawks and the Steelers came away in Seattle 30 to 23 total yards for this game was 468 to 364 so an absolute shootout and mason rudolph went for 274 he's looked really good since he got that starting job and the steelers playoff hopes are not yet dead obviously a win next week would be huge for them but there is a way they can get in with a loss so honestly the steelers are turning things around at the right time it might be a little too late but they played better than I expected. They get Mike Tomlin's 17th straight winning season to start a career, which is actually insane. And I honestly think the Seahawks just ended up on the wrong side of the coin. Things just didn't really go their way. Next up, we have Chargers at Broncos, a highly anticipated match between Easton Stick and Jarrett Stidham. Broncos pull away 16 to nine. Now this was a weird game, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm gonna say that the Broncos exceeded expectations. I did not expect them to play very well without Russ and Stidham came in and did his job. 16 points, not a whole lot, but it was enough. The Chargers, on the other hand, they need to figure something out. Are they an NFL team or not? We thought it was the defense. They give up 60 plus to the Raiders. Then they hold the Broncos to 16 and are unable to get into double digits. Rough day for Chargers fans. I want to know how you guys are feeling about next year. Maybe with a new head coach, things will be different. I like the Chargers roster, but you guys have just simply been disappointing for year in and year out. Just two games to go. And before I get to these last two, I want to thank you for sticking around to this point. Absolute legend. And I'm going to test you a little bit i want to see you work turtle into your comment this time speaking of turtles however in this Bengals chiefs game that happened at arrowhead the chiefs defense was everything but slow going down 17 to 7 early the chiefs make an 18-0 run and come back 25 17 butker goes six for six they hold the Bengals scoreless on their last seven drives and so while that chiefs offense continues to struggle their defense is a glimmer of hope as they take that afc west title for the eighth straight time overall the Bengals line absolutely so Hold this game. At one point, I know for a fact I saw Browning get sacked four out of five dropbacks. Jeez. I mean, are we an NFL team or are we hiring dudes off the street to play line? Golly. As for the Chiefs, while their offense did not look good, it did enough. They put up 25 and their defense looked just good enough to put them into this better than expected category. Honestly, shout out that whole unit because that last few drives, they... The Bengals couldn't get a single thing to go. And last but not least, we have... Packers at Vikings. Sunday night football. New Year's Eve. And God 
Damn it. The Packers have yet another Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love throws for 256 and three touchdowns. And he did that cute little lift the feet up throw that they like to do over in Green Bay. Smith knows it down to the edge. Here he comes. Protected as well. Firing to the middle of the field. Touchdown! So that's really fun for every NFL fan out there. But honestly, the Packers ran the ball really well, and the Vikings just didn't really want to play any defense. Based on Jordan Love's performance and the amount of injuries and suspensions Green Bay had to deal with, I'm going to say they absolutely balled out. That might be a little high, but the Packers did it when it counted. I'll give it to them. You lose that game, you're out of the playoffs. Speaking of out of the playoffs, the Vikings aren't officially eliminated yet, but they are really close. So at this point, I'm just going to say... I'm disappointed. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, liking and subscribing would make you more clutch than the refs were for the Cowboys fans this week. And I want to hear your thoughts down below. I can assure you I will read and respond to all of them. Let's enjoy the rest of this NFL season, and I'll see you all in the next one.